to do the last stages on today's I Paint Your Life Live painting. Um, it's becoming my thing, that, isn't it? That thing. Anyway, there's... Um, <coughs> I've been working on this lovely VW this morning, this uh, very, 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 very shiny, blue, beautiful, um, customised VW Beetle from the life of Carl. I must apologise to Carl. I really must. Because for the, even though I've known I've been painting for Carl all this time, for some reason, yesterday, every post that I put on, I called him Bruce. Now Bruce was the guy that I painted for two paintings ago. The guy that owns this car over my shoulder. Carl owns this one. It wouldn't be so bad except for the fact that all the time I was painting for Bruce, for some reason I kept calling Bruce Gary. This is some strange syndrome that nobody's ever told me about that happens to you when you get a bit older. <laughs> I don't really... Uh, <clears throat> I can only be embarrassed about it, Carl. And I do apologise. And I apologise to Bruce for calling you Gary. I will try my best for the rest of this series to get everybody's name right. OK, that said, let's, uh, let's have a look at the painting. Let's have a closer look at the, uh, the picture that we're working from. This is the photograph that uh, Carl, not Bruce, sent to me of his lovely customised beetle. And we are at the moment at this stage with it too. Again, that's, the, that's where we're at. Spent yesterday working in the background here and the foreground using different techniques. Um, we used... Uh, masking techniques in the background here to try and sort of get these flowers that are in the background of the picture sort of depicted and some kind of it's a bit stylized i might try and natu naturalize that up a little bit uh once we've got the car in uh and we use splattering te techniques in the foreground here splattering with um uh masking fluid and splattering with uh dark paint to try and create a sort of stony sort of texture which I'll also work on a little bit more later on but at the moment we're working on the car and the car here is we're starting to establish it um, we were starting to establish it until yesterday when I pressed the wrong button <laughs> basically I clicked the wrong thing I was trying to do something clever with the tech, uh, which I probably shouldn't have attempted live, uh, and everything disappeared, and the stream ended, which I do apologise for. I did try and start it again, but um, we ended up with just a 55 second video of me going, oh bloody hell, oh, oh no, oh god, oh no, hmm. didn't really work. As I've mentioned before, this is all very new to me, this um, whole streaming thing. So I'm having to come to get familiar very quickly with a lot of unfamiliar uh, software and a lot of unfamiliar technology. Um, I did get uh, one comment yesterday that said, could I turn the microphone up, please? Could I turn the sound up? Uh, and I've done that today. I've tweaked it up a little bit. So hopefully that's a little bit better. I'll try and keep the microphone, which is here, just off picture. Looks more professional, don't you think? But it does mean that if I mumble, which I don't mumble in this first session very much in the morning, but I noticed that by the time the day's getting on, especially if we go into a third session of that day, I'm a terrible mumbler. And I do apologise for that. Not only do I go quiet because I'm, by the third session, I'm usually concentrating on the detail. And my mind is too into the painting to make my mouth move at the same time for some reason. Um, but, you know, I, 
I know that by the time I get to that time of the day, I am a terrible mumbler. And I'm there and I'm going down here and I'm mumbling to myself. I, I will try and get better at this. By the time I've done 50 paintings in this series, I hope that I am as professional as any presenter that you will see on the television and, and everything who's practiced it and who has, um, what's the word I'm looking for? But, you know, has had the chance to be um, rehearsed, edited, made to look absolutely beautifully polished and never makes a mistake. Right, we are going to go straight to it. Let's go to this one. We have the chat open, ready uh, for anyone that would like to contribute. I still haven't managed, for some reason, to um, get the chat to make me a sound when um, when I play the um, when when somebody gives me a message. Uh, so I do keep missing them, and I do apologise for that. But in the meantime, we will hopefully everything will be working. Hold on, I've just noted there's an error. Facebook event not live, it says. Um, well, I am going to have to do something about that because this Facebook is the most popular platform that this has been for you, Don. Um, right. Anybody that is watching this at the moment, please excuse me. I am going to have to try and sort out why I'm not showing on Facebook. I might have to end this session and start it again. Um, let's see what happens. Let's uh, just go and have a look on my phone at Facebook. This is the thing, you see. It is very... I don't know why. I should be streaming live at this very moment. Ah, actually, it's lying to me. For some reason, it's lying to me. And it's saying that the uh, there is an error. Uh, and that the session isn't live. But I've just been had a look on my phone and it is live. So we're okay. <coughs> Do not adjust your sets. We are in fact working. So, enough of the my technological mishandlings here. And on with the painting. As you can see what we've got here is <coughs> the beginnings of making this car shiny and blue. Now making a car shiny with what is basically matte paint. Watercolour paint is a matte medium. It's not a shiny medium. It's not going to be varnished. It's not going to shine in that way. So everything I do in this session is going to be trying to make something that is matte look as if it's shining. Um, which is a bit of a bit of a, a difficult task, but there are ways of doing it which will become apparent as we go on here. I'm hoping that my tablet that I paint from holds out because for some reason, <coughs> I have no idea why, the charge cable isn't charging it, so it's gone down to 55% overnight. Um, Fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed for me. I'm having technological gremlins this morning. We're working on this baby today. We're just using the one flower palette. And at the moment, we've just been using one little pot in the centre of it. And I've been 
getting a mix of predominantly ultramarine blue, French ultramarine, not the posh stuff. There we go. Um, and just adding to it here and there a touch of manganese blue, which is slightly on the turquoisey sort of spectrum. And we will use on this area around here where, the, where it changes and goes light. But at the moment, let's just keep on working with this mixture. Bear with me for a moment or two while I just stare intently at the car. This is one of the things I, I find that I have to um, spend time before I'm actually putting any paint on the paper uh, in a session, just looking at the car, just looking at what needs to be done. Before I actually put any paint on, Let's check that out. That's a little on the dark side. Let's add some water to that. I'm very happy to find that there have been, there are now one or two people who are signing in to my sessions, especially to watch the painting, to especially to um to get ideas for themselves for because they're learning to actually paint in watercolor themselves and i was very concerned at the beginning when i decided to do this project that this long format way of doing things this This, um, <clears throat> you know, each one of these paintings takes a few hours. Some of them take a lot of hours. And I'd, I was concerned that, that people might not be, you know, that it wouldn't work. I mean, it's a long time to ex expect people to, especially in these modern times, to keep people's interest. You know, they reckon that nowadays, I don't know whether you've noticed with modern music, this is an interesting one, with modern music, we used to get, there was a formula, there's always been a formula for like pop music and um, that sort of thing, but the formula has changed over the years, all depending on the way that we're consuming it. It used to be that we would buy records, we would buy singles, and that you would listen to a song and you that song would have time over the three and a half, four minutes of, uh, of the single to establish itself. And so we'd start off and maybe we'd have an intro and we'd have a verse, maybe we'd have a second verse, then we'd have a chorus. Then we'd... And it, it, a certain formula grew up. Well, what's happened over the past few years as the way we consume music has changed and now we don't buy singles anymore in fact a lot of us don't buy music anymore in that sense what we do we we subscribe to a subscription service like Spotify 
and I mean I, I use Spotify you know I, I, I've got a Spotify playlist and, or YouTube I mean I use to be honest I look at YouTube more than anything and YouTube you know I'm not even paying anything for YouTube it's like all coming free it's a bit like the radio was I suppose in the early days but um, since we've started to consume music in that way it's meant that music itself has changed the the formula of um, the music that we consume has changed you probably not even noticed it but what has happened is that Because we're consuming in a way that we do, using Spotify and playlists and, and all that sort of thing, because we're doing it that way, people's attention span has been getting less and less and less. And so now, most songs, most pop songs, you know, your Katy Perry's, your Taylor Swift, your Lady Gaga's, your, all the rest of them, go to the chorus of the song really quickly. They go to the chorus, they're at in, in less than 45 seconds. If we don't go to the chorus, within 45 seconds, there's a good chance that anybody that's listening to it is going to click on. And click away from it. And it's, it's you know, it, it sounds bad, doesn't it? It sounds like You know something that's that shows us as a as a shallow let's say um, group of people that, that that happens but in a way it's the nature of it it's the nature of the medium that's making that's making us do it we are We don't have to wait anymore. We don't have to. Um, give things time to develop. Which is what we did in the old days. We gave things time to develop. And we don't need to do that anymore. Because there's so much out there. Well, we, we put it on. And we just. Go in there like that. Oh, no, don't, I'm not in the mood for that. Swipe, swipe, click, whatever. Yeah, I mean, gosh, we're even doing it in it with our, with our love lives, aren't we? Swipe left, swipe right. Mm, like you, don't like you. You know, you're not my type. <laughs> Very odd way of, way of doing things. I mean, okay, you are now, and I do apologise, but you are now listening to the ramblings of an old man who is... Um, looking at contemporary society and going, hmm, this doesn't make much sense to me. <laughs> and uh, okay, I hope I'm not that bad. Not yet. But um, in many ways, um, it doesn't make much sense. <laughs> I did see a really funny thing on YouTube the other day that somebody had uh, put on, I, I forget who'd said it. It was quite somebody famous. It was a quote from somebody famous. And uh, they were saying that, you know, when you're young, new technology is just the world that you live in. It's just, this is it, this is, 
what you're born into, you know, and that's, you accept that. Everything just is, you know, you're born into, a, I never questioned television when I was young, it was just part of my life. To, to my parents who had grown up in the days of uh, radio with no television at all, it didn't exist when they grew up, it, it still must have retained some kind of magical element, but I know to me, it was just normal. And that's the way we do it, isn't it? That's the way things are for us. Uh, and then it said, this guy said, then we get a little bit older. And <clears throat> we are excited by new technologies. They are, you know, they, they are, there's so much, we see the potential in in new developments and we find them exciting and uh actually let's come over the whole thing there and then take it out and then put the top bit in um i'm mumbling again sorry um but we do we, we do we see the potential in these things and we find them exciting and then we get to middle age and all of a sudden we wonder what the world is coming to with all this new technology <laughs> and is it really making the world a better place you've got to wonder haven't you in a way everything's a dual-edged sword and i do feel that we are we're like kids at the moment we're we are, oh, wait a minute, what, what do I mean, how do I put it? It's like we, we've got all these new toys, and they're exciting new toys, they really are, I mean, they, if, if it wasn't for the new toys that we have, I wouldn't be sitting here now, painting, uh, with people all over the world able to just log onto their computers or log onto their phones. I mean, for goodness sake, what's that all about? People can log onto their phones and all of a sudden there am I sitting here in sunny Cheshire painting and people are watching me. I know that I, there's at least one person, and you know who you are, Karen, logging in every day and watching me paint. And I'm in Cheshire here in England, and she's in Texas. It's now half past 10 here in England. And I'm not sure whether we've got a five or six hour time difference in Texas at the moment. Probably five hours, I think. So it's half past five in the morning and Karen is fast asleep. But she's going to wake up in a little while. And I know that she's going to log on. And she's going to be watching me painting here. And we're talking... thousands of miles away and a time difference of five hours and in a way you've got to you've got to admit that's incredible really and truly incredible isn't it I mean there is a magic about it but there's a magic about it that only people of an older generation will really and truly appreciate because to all the, the young people out there, this is just the world. This is just the way it is. And so we've got this lovely 
this lovely thing going here where I'm painting in England and you guys are watching me. You know, I'm painting paintings for people that I've never met and I probably never will meet. And they've sent me their photographs over the internet and I got them electronically and painted them and I'm sending them back to them I send them up back by the post. We're still using a, a system like that because otherwise they can't get the original. But the point is, the point that I'm trying to make is, that this is a good one. This is a good thing. This is a good um, aspect of modern technology. It, it, it's enabling me to do something nice that people like and that uh, gives people enjoyment. It doesn't cost you anything other than your broadband subscription or your mobile phone subscription which has nothing to do with me anyway. You know, if I paint your painting, you can see it before you buy it. And hopefully you do buy it, because otherwise, you know, paintings that don't sell don't put food on the table. But um, this is good. This is. But there are other things that are changing. That to me, as a an older person who's lived through different times, to me don't seem as good uh, as what we had when I was young. Now I do. Now I am starting to sound old, aren't I? But and anybody that knows me is probably going to be. Oh, yes, I've heard him talk about this before, which because they have. Um, but take music again as an example. I grew up in an era of the top 20 being the big thing. The we watched Top of the Pops, which uh, ran down the top 20. We watched it every Thursday night without fail. We wanted to see who was the next big thing, what was happening in the charts, what was happening in music. It was a big thing for us as teenagers. And we watched and we listened to the radio every Sunday night. For a couple of hours, I think probably if I remember rightly, between five and seven o'clock. And we listened to Pick of the Pops with Alan Freeman, Fluff Freeman as they called him. Hey there, pop pickers. You know, down, 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 down. I mean, it brings back memories just thinking about the music, of the theme music, but we waited avidly to, to, to um, see what was going to be the net, this week's number one. It mattered to us. We, it was part of what was important in our lives as teenagers. 
but that's gone and it doesn't matter to the younger generation because they have never known any difference but what we had and what they don't have in the same way from that is this shared experience top of the pops was watched by millions and millions of people every thursday night millions tuned in and we all listened at the same time so that when we went to school the next morning We, we were all geared up. We were all excited about what we'd heard the night before and who was, who was big and who wasn't and what was up and coming and what was the latest thing. And we were there and we were all part of something big. That's gone. That experience has gone. Maybe it seems old fashioned to young people. Maybe it seems, I don't know. Maybe it seems oh, trivial, you know, the fact that we used to do it that way. But having experienced it, I much prefer it now to now, where everything is online and everything's virtual and everybody is sharing their interest in whatever they're interested in over the internet with people they don't even know people they've never met people they never will meet I have to wait till I've taken the masking off there to fiddle with that and uh, the net the other thing that goes along with that is the actual consumption of the music because When I was a teenager in the early 70s, I was able to go 200 yards up the road from our house. I lived in the centre of Hamley in Stoke-on-Trent, the main town in Stoke-on-Trent. And I was able to go 200 yards up the road from where I lived And there was a civic hall there called the Victoria Hall, part of the town hall. I had a, th a civic hall theatre in there. And in there, I saw David Bowie. I saw Queen before they were the huge hit thing that they became. They were, they did a tour with a band that was, that was at the time was much more well known than they, than they were called Mott the Hoople. You might remember Mott the Hoople. Mott the Hoople had a big hit uh, with a, a David Barry written song called All the Young Dudes. And Mott the Hoople were big. And Queen were their support band. Um, and it was one of those strange things because these things are planned so far in advance. By the time we actually got to... Um, concert the concert dates after the after they've been booked to support from what the hip hop queen had charted and they'd had I, I, would it be killer queen i think it was the first probably the first hit there in the charts um but they charted and they were actually also quite famous 
So we've actually got the chance to see them as a support band, even though they were charging as well. And not only did we get to see them, but they were literally inches away. I was pushed right up against the stage. I could reach out and touch Freddie Mercury if he came close enough. I didn't, but I could have done. Um, at one point, Ariel Bender, who was the <laughs> wonderful name, who was the um, lead guitarist with Mott the Hoople at the time, came too close to the edge of the stage and was dragged forward uh, onto my head. We were that close. Now you go to a concert, you are in a gigantic arena and you are, or you're at a festival and you are miles and miles away from the stage. You're miles and miles away from what's happening and You're watching it all on big television screens. I mean, apart from the atmosphere of being there, you might as well be at home watching it on television, really. It's just coming along. I hope you don't mind me just rambling on like this uh, as I paint. I tend to be able to... when I'm doing these things, get into it and sort of paint on on autopilot in a way I suppose and and, and in a way just talking at the same time sort of makes it uh Makes it flow better, I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? You wouldn't think it would work that way, but it does. So, uh, yeah, listen to the rambling musings of an old bloke uh, at the same time as I'm painting. It's up to you. Turn the sound off, just watch me paint, I don't care. But also, it meant that, going back to music, this whole thing meant that, the way that it was meant that it was, it was very much a real experience, part of our, our lives. These people were close to us. We felt that we were a part of, of it all in a, in a very, exciting sort of way. I have a memory that goes back to early childhood. I would have been five, six years old, something like that. And where I lived in, in Hamley, in Stoke-on-Trent, we, our house belonged to the cinema next door, which had been built years before as a, as a cinema and theatre. At that time it was called the Gormont. And they renamed it the Odeon and now it's actually called the, uh, the Regent again, which was its original name. But um, most of the time it was a cinema, but just occasionally they would put on a, a local amateur dramatic show or they would 
put on. Uh, a show with 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 bands. It would tend to be a mixed bag of entertainment. I think sort of like variety was the bit was in its heyday really. Um, yeah, Malcolm and Wise were the biggest thing on television. Let's just. Uh, Set back for a minute and just take this in. It's coming. Um, and I'd been ab I'd be about five or six years old, and at that time people could park in the street outside. They made it a uh, one-way system uh, a few years later and closed the end of town off almost really. But at that time people could park in the street outside. And so there were cars parked on the, in the, on the opposite side of the road to our house. We lived almost right next to the theatre. I mean, they've demolished the house now and actually extended the theatre. So the, I live where the stage door was. Well, where the stage door is now. But the, the dressing room windows looked out over that street. And one day when I was five, six years old, we looked outside and the street was heaving with youngsters, mainly girls. The street was so full that they were sitting and standing on top of the cars that were parked in the street. And what they were doing was looking up at the dressing room windows. And every so often, somebody would open a window and look out or they would throw some autographs down because the Beatles were playing next door and it was a huge huge thing the street was full of screaming girls and they were there all day a lot of them were there, were there all night because they couldn't get into the theatre to see them because the Beatles were so big um, it, and it was all it was a phenomenon Everywhere that the Beatles went was like that. And I, I don't know. I mean, I suppose it can be a bit the same nowadays. Um, but it, it's not exactly the same. Uh, the nearest thing I've seen to that as an adult was a few years ago. Julian, my son and I, uh, probably about 10 years ago, were in New York for a few days. And... We went. We went to. Uh, we went to Times Square, which was just down the road, down the road from where we were staying. And Times Square was. There was an area in Times Square that was again full of young girls, who occasionally would scream up at the witness windows. And we were next to. I'm not sure what which studio it was. There was a studio that looked down onto Times Square from uh, from. Yeah, you know, first floor, as we would call it in this country. Um, you call it the second floor in America, but we call it the first floor. And um, there was a window there, and they were looking at this window. And uh, I said to somebody, I said, "What? what what's going on? What are they doing? What, what's happening? And he said... Justin Bieber standing in that window there. And I looked up and about 12 feet above us, there was Justin Bieber standing, being interviewed by, I think it was MTV. Um, and these girls were there giving it someone. That was the, you know, that was the nearest thing I've experienced as an, as an adult to, to that sort of fan thing. But I don't know. You see that, this is a, another B. N. Stevens bonnet. We've had something happen that's coincided in this country at the time that's coincided with um, the coming of the internet and the, these changes in the way that music is consumed. And that's... We changed the licensing laws here. 
uh, about 20 years ago, I suppose-ish, maybe a bit longer. Um, we allowed 24-hour opening and we, uh, we just changed the way that drinking was done in this country. And it was, I mean, it was done specifically so that, really it was done specifically so that some people that had bought pubs could make a lot of money out of basically attracting kids into their establishments and uh, selling them booze, you know. But the side effect of this was that this came, with this came the advent of what was known, what is known as the pub company with the spoons and hogshead and all these different pub companies that opened super pubs, big pubs aimed at young people. Aimed at selling as much alcohol every night to young people as could as they could consume. And the result of this, apart from the fact that it started a culture of binge drinking that made the streets of English cities and towns a domain that most of us would never want to go out into in the evening. The, the result of it was eventually that all the small pubs that had been the lifeblood of this country and in terms of social life and things happening began to close down. You know, at one time there was something like 19 pubs a day closing down. Now that's a lot of pubs closing down. And of course the pubs had been where you learnt your trade as a band. That was where you got your bookings. You got your bookings in the in the local pubs. Whether you played for beer money or whether you played for door money or whether they paid you. I mean, sometimes they paid you, which was good. But it meant that small pubs, small music venues and everything were a part of life. And young people young bands could play there and learn how to entertain an audience. What's happened now is that the w and, and what, what would happen then is that you would play and you would play and you would begin to create a buzz they would say you would be noticed as, as actually building a fan base attracting a local audience attracting you'd start to travel in, the, in your little van around the, the country and you'd start to attract a fan base around the country and you'd come to the attention of a record company who would send out an A&R man who would look at you and say you guys are coming along well. We think we can do something with you. And you get a recording contract. And they'd invest money in you. And they give you an advance to, to spend on, supposedly to spend on recording your singles or your album or whatever, or 
quite often, I think, just to buy your drugs. <laughs> but whatever you spent it on, you got it. You got that advance. You had to pay it back. But you paid it back out of your... Out of the money that you earned selling singles and selling album, albums. And there was a system. And this system... worked very well for a lot of people, for a lot of musicians and and everything. What you've got now, how do you get noticed? How do you get noticed? How do you get noticed as a band? You, you, you're competing all the time to try and play in the same few venues. You desperately need exposure to be able to actually work out how to do what you what you do, how to learn your craft. But the places to get it aren't there. And so what, what we get now is we get talented young singers singing into their laptops in their bedrooms, hoping to get noticed on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and it's all about the image it's all about the image that you can create online and get yourself noticed by get yourself noticed online by you know the just literally flooding the world with you singing in your bedroom to your hairbrush taking endless selfies of yourself and all the rest of it and maybe you are going to be good maybe you're destined to be great you might be you know, some people have come up that way and become very, very famous and they've been very talented. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of respect for a lot of these people. I mean, if you, if you look at the early stuff that Jessie J was putting out a few years back when she was totally unknown, just singing into the mirror in her bedroom and yeah I mean great voice and there have been lots of others that have come up that way but but the problem is a lot of the time if you become famous that way by the by the time you actually start to really get to the point where you can play live Where you had, where you've attracted enough attention to get a record company or whatever interested in you or whatever, you are then thrust into these big arena shows and everything, because that's the only area of music nowadays that makes any money. And you've never, a lot of the time, you've never really been on stage. Actually, that needs to be removed. I think I need to remove some, uh, what's the name? Because you, the, the places where you could have learned to, to do what you do in front of an audience don't exist anymore. So you've got a huge learning curve as uh, as a young person in that situation. Oh, I've rambled on a little bit about this. I know it's one of those things. Music, I don't know whether you know, but music is my 
of the thing that's my that's the thing that I'm actually qualified in uh, yeah, I've got a a masters and a PhD and everything in, in music mainly in music technology but this is uh, So, I don't know, I just have a new little ramble. A little ramble as I paint. I don't know whether anybody's actually been online yet and, and seen anything. It's a bit early in the morning, I know. People will uh, people tend to appear later in the day. I've been happy in the way that this um, project has been growing steadily, gently. There has been a few more viewers watching it live each day. And hopefully, as time goes by, they will increase and there'll be more and more people watching, which is, which is nice. It's nice to know that you're not on your own just doing, doing this. For this to work, I need a steady growth. I need a steady audience to, to, to sort of like what I'm doing enough to to buy into what I'm doing the first touch of no it's not that one it's this one yeah maybe a mixture of both it's a bit thin it's the first touch of a different blue here going to come in just at this point this is cerulean blue it's a different shade of blue what I've got to be careful of though is that it stays pretty thin because it's an opaque colour and what we don't want is a situation where there's a situation where that opaque colour sort of begins to dull because at a certain strength an opaque colour will will go well oh, literally that opaque and this way of painting this style that I employ here very much depends on keeping the transparency of the of the paint uh, right at the front of what you're doing uh, if, if I start to put an opaque color in there that will 
the dolls then that shine that I'm hoping for that that gleam that I'm hoping for goes away I hope you can see that as I'm working here, uh, I'm building up layer on layer on layer of, uh, of paint. There will be areas where it gets quite dense, but even in those dense areas, I want, don't want it to go flat. I want it to retain a shine uh, somehow as, as, as I mentioned before we're trying to get a shine we're trying to imitate a shine with opaque paint which is quite a task in a way coming Let's have a little drink good morning oh yeah there's somebody there good morning whoever is watching nice to see a, a little number I've got at the bottom of the chat box on the screen here there's a little eye and next to that eye is a little number and that number tells me how many people are watching at any one time and at the moment for a while this morning there's been zero and now there's one so whoever you are hello and it's nice to see you and I hope you stick around for a little while and um, while I crack on with this feel free if you want to chat to me to chat into the chat box I am um, very happy to engage with everybody about anything actually uh, I'm one of the things is that even though I'm doing this live I do realize that that the videos of this are going to go on that well they're going on to Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and all the rest of it and they will be there for a long time to come so there are going to be people watching this in the future so hello to all you people in the future so even if i only have one person at a time two people at a time at one person one time yesterday i had five people at a time which was rather nice but even if i only have that many people watching live um at some point in the future this could take off and in which case people will go back in time uh, and watch these early videos so oh well you know you just crack on don't you just keep going and see what happens at the moment what's happening is that a very nice looking VW Beetle is emerging from the uh, page. Slowly, steadily. <laughs> Hello, Judas. Yes, need to put your phone back on charge, indeed. 5%, I get really scared if my phone goes down to 5%. It's... Um, freaks me out I'm having a bit of problem at the moment the, the, the tablet that I'm working off here for some reason isn't charging at the moment so it's just going down so I've tried two different chargers so it must be the cable or something but um, I'm hoping that it's going to last this whole scene 
this whole thing session. That's too much. Bit at a time, slowly it's emerging. It's interesting this actually because the people that are popping on to to watch quite a lot, a lot of the time are people that have bought paintings from me in the past or people that have been engaging with me over the years but uh, most of the time just engaging with me or my paintings by 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 tech by typing you know things i put on the screen messages back and forth that sort of occasional thing um and now all of a sudden i'm a voice and occasionally a face, you know. Um, changes as we go, doesn't it? It's, it, it's, uh, it's nice. It's coming together. Let's have a look at that bit over there. I want to take the masking tape off, but I don't want to do it too soon and uh, end up taking the paper off with it. Let's, uh, let's take that bit off there. I'll take it off in little stages where I know that it's dry because this wants to come around here. I hope this doesn't make too big a difference to um, to the sound here. It's nice and in this room, one of the good things is that when I close the door, it does cut out most of the sounds from outside. Uh, but I am going to do something now that I try and really try not to do. But if I don't open this door, I am going to sweat to death at the moment because it's getting really warm in here. So I'm going to open the door at the side of the studio here. Let some fresh air in. Here's the microphone. Let some fresh air in and uh, hopefully it won't pick up too much noise from the roads outside. We are quite away from the road in many respects. We don't get a lot of traffic down this road either, so shouldn't be too bad. Let's, uh, let's go up here. Pardon me. 
Now this area here is quite an important one because it's going to be an area that your eye will be drawn to because this is where the the sunburst the the flare of the uh, of the light uh, where the light's hitting the car from the sun that is reflected into the lens of the camera that, uh, that was when this shot was taken this is where it, that happens and what I don't want is to be is to is to lose that because I might be able to pop them back in a different way in a bit actually there's a glimpse that I've lost what I don't want to do is lose lose it and I've got to be able to soften these edges up where the flare occurs and luckily Payne's Grey which is the colour I've just put on is quite good at being taken off again and so you can put on Payne's Grey and you might have an, a hard edge but with a little bit of working a little bit of water judicious water you can take it soften it up and take the color in a different direction which is nice so that's keeping this soft i've got a little bit of masking fluid there actually to protect a little bit so we'll be saving a glint there um, it's all a combination of soft and hard We want hard and soft lines, and in this area, we want a, a hard line down here, but we want a soft line without. I have to be very careful here because I don't want this kind of clean piece of um, kitchen roll. We want to do it without smudging onto the onto the white. So softer. I mean, I will be doing other things to that. To, to, to make this into a flare rather than just a splodge that it does at the moment. We've got uh, masking fluid on there at the moment, so when that comes off, we'll work on that. Let's put some of the um, mix of ceruleum and manganese onto the bonnet here. you can't hear my wife talking in the background since I've opened the door she's making a phone call inside the house which isn't that far away from where we are at the moment um, I don't think you will be able to I don't think it'll pick up that much there we go Have to take some. Oops, that was a 
mistake. Get that off quickly. Yeah, that's right. I'll take that masking off in a minute. Let's uh, just soften that down. Where it blends into the white. Constantly working both wet into wet on dry and then dabbing it out so that the the area that we're working in is damp so that the cover that we put on flows softly. don't want a lot of hard edges we should be working very gently hmm. that's coming I think that angle's wrong to come more across there. And I think actually we need to take a little bit off it there. This is the advantage of knowing that your colours that you're working with what how they work and what they do. Um, certain colours that you work with are that's better it's not right actually I have to take that masking off and correct that certain colours that you work with are as they say they call it they call them staining they, you, when you will put them on and they will instantly stain the paper in a particular way and and, a st and staining colours don't come off all you can do is put them on and just stop non-staining colours on the other hand which is what I try and use most of the time can be lifted and can also be what I'm doing at the moment is I'm working on the edge of these colours to remove the edge to blend them in to the white and so you can soften that edge so you've got the colour there it's glowing but it's 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 not a sharp line sometimes you want a sharp line other times you don't I'm going to put some of that same colour on now here have a little bit of on the other side of the bonnet again keeping it quite pale add more water to it make it paler and you do want in this case sharp lines of course you want the sharp line that defines the edge of the car and you want the sharp line that at the moment is being kept for us by the masking that we put on that gives the line down the bonnet or as I remembering for the American people that will be watching this when they've woken up later on the hood funny isn't it uh, is it Oscar Wilde that said about uh, 
England and America that we are two peoples divided by a common language. <laughs> we speak the same language, but in a way we don't. It's not bad. Ah, looking good. That's all right. That's all right. Now we want to bring some of the the original colour in sort of quite a deepish sort of form. Up the bonnet. Oh, hood. Bonnet, hood, I don't mind which we call it. With the <clears throat> because actually, this is a Volkswagen Beetle. So it's neither the bonnet or the hood. Actually, it's the, well, what we would call in this country the boot, what you would call in America the trunk. Because, of course, the engine's in the back, isn't it? It's a wonderful world, the Volkswagen world, really. There's very few cars, uh, mass-produced cars, in the way that the Beetle was, that demand, that command, I suppose is a better word, command such a devoted fan following. Uh, I, I, it was my first car when I learnt to drive a hundred million years ago was a Volkswagen Beetle and I absolutely doted on my Beetle. I had it for four years until it died finally beyond what I could afford to do with it anymore and my life had changed I was in a different place so the beetle had to, the beetle went but I, for those few years i was absolutely i joined the the beetle fanboy situation the beetle fan base you know each year it wasn't as the scene was nowhere near as big as it is now but each year my wife, my then wife, um, Angie and I would disappear off to Volkswagen Action every year at Stonely, uh, the Royal Showground in Stonely near Birmingham. And um, we'd have a great time watching these amazing things that people would do with their Beatles. There'd be literally hundreds and hundreds of Beatles and camper vans and different types of VWs there and we had a great time and I was very much in the vaults I can see now differences between now and then is that my beetle cost me 150 quid and I, 150 pounds for those people that don't realize what a quid is, uh, that might be watching from around the world. Um, it cost me 150 pounds and literally I drove it for four years. I must have put about three different three or four different engines in it in that time. Don't goodness knows how much welding and repairs and everything to and do it, mess it up, done a paint job on it, done all sorts of things uh, in that four years. And finally it died 
and it had to go my life had changed I'd move I'm moving away and doing all sorts of different things as you do when you're young and it's I, we sold it as a non runner for 50 quid it just goes to show doesn't it how things have changed now these things go for thousands and thousands of pounds even a non-runner will go for a ridiculous price I could never nowadays afford a Volkswagen Beetle and to be perfectly honest and I hope I don't insult anybody who you know, out there who's into the fanaticism of the VW world, to per be perfectly honest, unless you actually put a lot of love and time and effort into into doing the car up and upgrading the engine and upgrading everything and making it go a little bit better, they're not the greatest of cars. Um, to drive the the performance is really sluggish, you know, and yeah, you can spend some money on them uh, and make them, you know, amazing. But um, must stop, mustn't fiddle about too much down this area yet because I've got to um, take the masking tape off and uh, the masking fluid off and sort it out. Uh, I think I might let that dry. Oh, well done. Let's do this first. And then take the masking off. still working with literally just well three colors really I've just added a fourth uh, in the last couple of minutes I've just added a little bit of paint gray to uh, the ultramarine blue to darken it down in these dense areas I'll put, be working some more into that in a little while but it's coming slowly. Right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave that to dry for a couple of minutes. Go and get myself a hot drink, I think. Um, and then come back and finish it off. So, if you want to go away and make yourself a cup of tea, whatever do it now if you're watching it in the future you can just wind through this bit I shall be back very shortly to uh, take off the masking which I can't do until it's dry and then sharpen it all up and make it look very beautiful hopefully till then back soon
Right, I am indeed back. Got a nice cup of coffee by my side and I'm ready to carry on and put the finishing touches to this baby. What I'm going to do now is take off the masking fluid is the next stage in the process. Um, which end, that was the end I was painting last time, so let's start up at the back here and remove all the masking fluid, which will leave us with some strange looking bits, but what we do next is we get in there with, with the paintbrush and we tighten it all up. That's nice. That's going to be where the lens flare goes. This will mainly disappear into the paintwork. This will have to be softened. That's got to go blue. a little bit more pencil work on that to bring that one back from the edge and nearly there that one's going to go dark right just run my finger across the surface gently and make sure that I've not left any bits a bit there's a bit there any bits of masking fluid behind it is very easy to do that and that's it. This will lead on. Put a bit of charge into my uh, tablet that I'm working with. What I don't want is for it to just dis disappear on me before I finish the painting. <laughs> I don't know why this lead's not working. Get that one out. And uh, pop that on back in. Still not charging. going on here. We'll just have to get my fingers crossed. I do have another tablet upstairs that I can go and get if I have to. You don't want to know this, do you? You just want to see me paint. Right. Let's start at the back and work our way forward. Literally only for one reason alone and that is that I am right handed and it means that
means that I'm not putting my hand all over freshly painted paint. Come down a little bit and key there. I don't know whether you've noticed, but I've been able to talk all the way putting, through putting all the, the broader colours on. And then as soon as I start getting into this itsy bitsy finishing detail, I talk less and less. So I don't know why. I think it's just because my brain gets more censored. Censored? I mean, centered. Um, on what I'm doing here. I'm trying to stick as closely as I can at this point to what I actually see on the photograph. A lot of the earlier stuff that you see, the road and the background and everything, it's been using the photograph as a, a, a rough indication of, uh, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give you the impression of the, of the background and the situation of the car sitting in. The car itself I've got to be a little bit more respectful to the people that have spent hundreds, maybe thousands of hours working on this baby and bringing it to this beautiful condition that it's in now. I know that uh, and the Carl, who, whose car this is, uh, said to me when he asked me to paint this car for him that um, he would like it painted before he gets rid of it. So it's going to be sold. And this will be, apart from photographs that he's got of course, but this will be a, a constant memory, a constant reminder of all that work, all that effort, all that love that's been, you know, put into bringing this beautiful thing into a existence, really. Because this isn't it. This isn't just any old piece. This, this isn't. Look at this thing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's been chopped. It's been upgraded. It's been. It's had everything done to it. This baby has. And uh, the least I can do is to try and be as faithful to. be 
be as faithful to the, that uh, that I can be, really. And so, I am trying as I work this to to bear that in mind all the time, to be conscious of I mean I always want to do a good job that's just goes without saying but to be conscious of respecting I suppose that this is somebody's pride and joy this is somebody's somebody has put a lot of love into this Asking for it's a great thing and it can give, do so much to help you as you're painting but it, it has its limitations just like anything else and in the end once you take that masking fluid off you are just left with some white blodges white whites it, and then it's up to you to work into work into that and to turn it tighten it all up make it really nice Remember when you're doing this that nothing is set in stone. The paint can go on and as long as you're using the right paints, the paint can come off again if you if you uh, if you wanted to. And sometimes it can take it you'll take it off because you got it wrong. I mean that does happen even now. But other times you'll take it off as an effect. I mean, you've seen me, I don't know, you've seen me messing about doing this for a few hours now. And this has never been out of my left hand. Even when I'm not using it, it's there. It's like a, like a comfort blanket in many ways, I suppose. Um, I know that it's there all the time waiting for me. If I, if I go wrong or I want to put on and take off to give a particular effect then it's there sometimes you don't be quick especially if you go wrong it's like, it's like I don't know whether you were watching me yesterday but there was a moment yesterday where I did the stupid thing of um, accidentally dipping my there we go bit of a dab. Uh, accidentally dipping my brush into the masking fluid which is a fatal error masking fluid and um, paint brushes uh, are not a good mix but I was able very quickly to shove the masking fluid into water so not shove the masking fluid shove the brush into water and to um, be able to wipe it very quickly with the what I've got in my left hand which is obviously the the uh, tissue is coming along nicely. You need to dim down a little bit in here. This is the these can look the card you sort of think, my God, this is smooth paintwork. What are you doing, man? But actually, this is the effect of the reflection of the landscape. 
canvas and in the body of the car and it's this that makes it shine it's actually doing this bit that makes the paintwork look shiny hopefully anyway coming, it's coming nicely, giving the desired effect anyway, make that a little bit higher there, and deepen this, I keep working on this bit, and this is one of the darkest sections on the car, this, this particular part of the panel here, and this bit that comes down here, it's a, it's a constant thing of going back and forwards, backwards and forwards, putting your arm, taking off, putting on, taking off, and eventually it builds up, layer by layer, you've got to know where to stop, otherwise you will make it, you'll kill it, it'll go dead, but other than that, it's, there we go, let's put some of this bit, this light, lighter blue with a touch of the, touch of the cerulean blue in there, Yeah, you can cut it, you don't have to, you have to be very careful not to overwork it. Just go steady. bright as I want it to look at the moment, but it's not bad when you look at it on the screen actually. Um, if I put a little bit more work into the bit above it and sharpen the line up, it, it will come it will come into being nicely. Like this baby here. to be darkened. fascinating because if you look closely at a, a VW hubcap, not these alloy wheels that are on this car, but you know the domed hubcap that you get on a, on a standard Beetle, on each one of them, as you turn from it to paint it, is a mini landscape painting because each one of them is so shiny that they reflect the landscape around them and there's a little mini painting in each one of them which is quite interesting to do let's tighten this up that line there wants to be much narrower than I had put it I want to darken the rest down too much there so that's better that's better now a little touch of the the blue, light blue over here because this isn't white this bit. White comes as it moves forward. I want to put a touch of the landscape green in here just to sharpen this 
line. So once we're ready for him, maybe I'll just sharpen this up slightly here. Oh, I just realised the microphone's miles away from when I entered the room. So you probably, been, <coughs> you probably had trouble hearing me there for the past few minutes. I do apologise. I'll put it a bit closer to me now and I've shut the door so hopefully that'll work better. Ah, oh, you know, I need a producer. <laughs> I need, yeah, you know, if you're doing a radio show, there's somebody sitting in the next room taking care of all the tech. All you've got to do is talk. This is, uh, this is a total one-man band, this is, I tell you. Let's talk in this. But hey, we're, the point of it all is so that you can see the painting. If, if, the, if the technology is a little bit ropey uh, in these early stages, I'm sure it'll get better as we get, I get used to it. it. It's not going to be the end of the world, is it? Let's face it. The problem is, you see, if, if there is a producer sitting um doing the the tech side of things you know then they're also monitoring what you actually sound like and what you look like to the world i have no idea sitting here how much of a delay there is for one thing because i have actually had it on my phone down by my side occasionally, where I can actually see what you can see. Um, and I can see, sometimes there is quite a considerable delay, uh, up to a, a minute between me doing something here and you seeing it on your screen. Other times, like a few minutes ago, I was just checking and literally, it, it was almost um, and think there was like two or three seconds delay that was all so and I can't monitor that all the time it doesn't really matter but if there was a producer they could do that but hey I am a one man show I'm a one man band as Leo Sayer said oh my goodness there's a name from the past anybody remember Leo Sayer <laughs> I'm a one-man band Nobody knows or understands Is there anybody out there Want to lend me a hand To my one-man band mm. Takes me back I'm using this as an excuse sometimes. This this whole painting block here is just an excuse for me to um, torture you with my my singing. <laughs> well, I hope it's not too much of a torture. It's not that bad. Um, I don't know. It's funny actually because I am actually when you're filling it. I mean, if you do a radio show, let's say, you tend to do even if you do like the breakfast show or whatever, you talk for three hours maybe or whatever, and then there are times in that where you're playing records and you're doing all sorts of. Uh, other things or maybe you're interviewing somebody or or whatever but of course doing this I'm sitting here for hours on end and I'm trying to fill the I find myself trying to fill the airspace with uh, with things to think of to say I, I can't Literally, I don't think you can expect me to
to just talk about putting the paint on the paper constantly for five and a half, six, seven, eight hours, or however, however long each painting takes. That would be boring. So, you know, so forgive me if I go off on one occasionally, which I am bound to do because that's what I'm like. Just ask out the family. <laughs> I do like to. I do like to talk. I like to talk about the way things were and the way things are now. And just don't, don't, don't let me get onto Brexit or COVID because if you get me on Brexit or COVID, well, that's it. I'll go on for hours and half of you will turn off because we live in a country that's divided by those two things. But... Um, So let's try and avoid that. I'll try and avoid politics. Because that's another... Another way that the country is all split and divided down the middle, isn't it? It's funny, I've been on... Social media... Mainly for for painting and music and all that sort of thing now for quite a few years. I, you probably have been as well. And the only time, 99.9% .9 of the time, everybody that I have anything to do with is absolutely lovely, I have to say. You're all extremely nice to me. You're all very respectful. You say very nice things about the stuff that I do. And, it's, and everybody's gorgeous, I have to say. The only time that I've any, had any problems at all was during uh, the election campaign for um, the last two elections, and Brexit a little bit, I suppose. But... The, there was just one moment during the election campaign where somebody, I can't, don't know who it was, I can't remember, it's a long time ago, but somebody had said some really horrible, racist, misogynistic things about Diane Abbott. I mean, poor Diane Abbott came in for so much stick during the election. It was totally horrible to watch. But somebody had put this stuff online and it was vile. And I um, made a, a comment on this post defending her. Because I don't like people being nasty to one another. And it's not fair. It's not nice. Yeah. My mum taught me that if you haven't got anything nice to say, well, keep your gob shut. Don't say anything at all. But, um... All of a sudden, when I put this thing on, this bloke, who I didn't know from Adam, suddenly appeared on my social media, and he was horrible. He was laying into me, and he'd been uh, he'd been to look at my website, and he'd been looking at my posts, and he. He knew I was an artist and he was insulting me, he was insulting my painting, he was insulting everything he could think of to just be, just be horrible. And uh, I did reply to him, well, maybe I shouldn't have done, but I did reply to him at one point. Um, and he just got, it, it, worse and worse and worse and the language that he was using was 
Gosh, it was horrible. It really was. But, um, so I just blocked him. <laughs> I just said, thank you very much for your vile hatred. I'm not interested in listening to you any anymore. I'm blocking you. Oh, he didn't like that. Didn't like the fact that I was blocking him. He went off on a real tirade of hate and horribleness. Oh, honestly. Despair sometimes. Now, there's a bit here where, for some reason, maybe I didn't get the masking right or whatever. Um, we've gone over into a part that needs to be very, very white. So I will reclaim that. Uh, I will reclaim that as uh, as we go on. There are areas that here were in on the paint on this painting, in the areas where the highlights are, where they're glinting, that at, you'll see at the end what happens. You'll see me just pull them out again of the of the image. Constantly trying to keep this area fairly smooth because the wings are one of the smoothest parts of the whole thing. It's coming, it's coming. These bits on the side are still too prominent. It's really, it's really nice. I've, 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 I've not experienced this until this last two or three, um, well, these paintings that I've been doing in this series and painting live. Being able to actually look up at the, the screen and see the painting on the screen is really useful. It's like looking at the painting from a distance or looking at it in a mirror or, or whatever. And I can see, ah, yes, of course. I can see to a great degree what you can see, but I can see the painting in a different way. And because I've also got the actual photograph of the car in front of me, I can see things that need doing to pull it all together, things that need doing to To make it work in a way that I can't just looking at the at the actual image. down at the back yeah that's better just leave a little bit of a line it's coming it's coming maybe a 
another bit more paint on here. Choosing this bit really carefully. It's a very smooth gradient. Before I go any further, let's put a little bit of, bring the drawing back into the headlights because I'm going to have to work on those in a minute. I tend to leave the headlights and the wheels to near to the end, especially the, especially the, the headlights actually. They, they, they reckon that when, you know the uh, Chinese custom of the uh, uh, a, a new year of bringing out the dragon, and they bring out the giant dragon, and lots of guys get underneath the dragon, and they bring the dragon to life. Actually, that is not that is right. That, I thought that was over the top of it, but it's not. It should be going like, like that. Well, that's actually okay. I thought I was going to have to reclaim it, but I'm not. Um, and they bring the dragon to life. And as they bring the dragon to life, I believe the custom has it that the last thing that they do is put the dots in the eyes of the dragon. And I always feel with these cars that as I, when I leave them to the end, the headlights, put it in the, the finishing touches to the headlights, it's almost like dotting the eyes of the dragon. It's... It's that final little thing that says, there you go, done. So I want to make sure that I've got the lines of the headlights in there. Once. If by any chance, while you're watching me paint, if you're obviously watching live, there's no point if you're not, there's no point if you're watching like, five years in the future but if you are watching live and you see something blaringly obvious that I've that I've I've missed or I've not done right please feel free to point it out as I go along because I'm not perfect I will make mistakes and sometimes I won't notice those mistakes until, well, even when I finished the painting. It has been known. There was a time early on in my painting career, back in the uh, late 
1980s. And I did my very first ever attempt at a portrait. And it was a very beautiful picture that I, I image that I worked from and it was a painting of and I'll just get this right because I got it wrong at first. It was a painting of a young girl about four years old, five years old sitting holding a baby and both of them had fallen asleep and I have to try and take this back and try and knock it back um I literally have got this bit wrong. So this is a, a little bit of correction going on here. Let's try and soak the paper enough to get this paint off. I'll get it light enough anyway to actually do the job. Let's get a different brush, something that's a little bit firmer. Don't want to go too firm, I don't want to bristle, otherwise I can spoil the surface of the paper. And I do want to keep painting there, but I want something that's a little bit stiffer, oh, that's stiffer. That's coming now. It's going light enough to to correct what I've done wrong. I think it's probably one of the most interesting parts for for you to watch. If you're watching to um, get tips on painting in watercolor, which I know some people are, um, these sort of things are invaluable things for you to learn, I suppose. Let's break that um, myth that says once you've done it in watercolour, that's it. You can't correct it. You can't change it. Oh, yes, you can. And we're about to. All we've got to do is let that dry. And then that area can be redone. And while that area dries, I'll do something else. Question is, what? Uh, I will lighten up this area for a start because I've realised that I've taken, I've gone too dark at this point. So let's take a little bit of paint off here, lighten it up. That's it. Now I can sharpen that up again in a minute. We are titivating a lot of the time. We are going back over different parts, putting in things to just tighten it all up. And uh, I think it's working. I think it's coming together. Sometimes it surprises me, these things, how working on them brings them out. There we go. Let's, uh, I'm going to turn it upside down. I want to sharpen the 
line I've got along the running board here and darken it to make the running board itself the edge of the running board which is chrome after all and actually, actually looking at it on this car I don't think it is chrome and it's been built into the bodywork of the car but usually it's chrome and it's a sharp line it, whichever way it's a sharp line and so you want to a nice sharp definition there I've perhaps gone too far down with this maybe I'll take off a little bit uh, in a moment though I'll let that dry All right, let's get this line in. I've, no, I've noticed that uh, I have not put this line in yet. And this make, will make a, make a big difference to the overall. Perception of the car. I mean, there's a door there now that wasn't there before. Now it looks like a door. That's good. There's one that there, that there. Let's darken these bits. Let's go in Well, we've got, while we're working in the dark, in the dark, so to speak. Let's go in along the bottom of the running board here and just sharpen that line up the tyre really just disappears into the darkness of the of the shadow so I don't want it to be too defined at this point so it can roll in there and actually while I'm here why not let's let's work the tire into the into the background we are going to use some paints gray and we're going to mix the paints gray with some others are in crimson to turn it into a a purple a bluey purple don't want to be too not a bit too red, let's add a bit more paints. Definitely need to put a lot, uh, a camera above the palette, don't I? So you can see me mixing. I know that's, uh, that's something that's quite important when you're learning to paint. This is a very mixed thing that I'm doing here, isn't it? When you think about it, when I, when I think about it, I'm, yeah, I'm painting pictures from people's lives so that they can they can watch their their painting uh, being painted I'm doing it so that you can enjoy you can all enjoy watching it and hopefully it'll encourage you to bring to dig into your photographs and send me a, another painting to paint I'm hoping of course I'm hoping I'm not stupid I'm hoping that people will buy the paintings when I finish painting them because hey eating is fun but 
at the same time, I know a lot of people will be watching this, just as I would be, to to watch the techniques, to watch what I'm doing um, and get a get tips and trick and everything from from watching me put paint on. I mean, I watch other people put paint on. I, I love watching people paint. And uh, and so I'm really giving extremely long painting demonstrations as well. Just leave it like that actually. I think that's enough. It does go down too much at the front. It pieces out before it gets down there. And it disappears into the shadow. There we go. and see at some point if I can get some kind of payback for the <laughs> for the painting lessons I suppose that I'm that these these I'm turning into I thought I might try and uh, just open a, a patreon page and see if people would be interested in just helping me out to keep me going while I do this just by donating a pound or two to the to the funds every month there's a lot of people do that nowadays the patrons been set was set up specifically to uh, for um people who are creating creating stuff whether they're creating um video content or whether they're doing as I'm doing at the moment which is doing six hour long painting lessons I'll see I'm thinking out loud now I do this Gap in the proceedings. Well, I just like that. Let myself refocus for a second.
make sure that you can see what I can see. I just have to keep checking um, occasionally just to make sure that the feed is still working. I'm paranoid about sitting here talking to talk, talking to you for hours on end and painting and the feed's died and you can't see anything but no nope, it's still there thank goodness that's great. Oh we're getting there we're getting there. I think these are proving themselves to be too light that we need to darken them down a bit. Start to tie it all in together better. You can't tell a lot of the time until you've got enough enough paint on whether whether you've put enough on or not, you know. Have a look at the bonnet. Let's try and sort out the problem that I ended up with before. As the curve comes up here, uh, on the Volkswagen Beetle bonnet, there is this like almost heart shape stamped into uh, into the metalwork. And so it goes down and it, as it does that it creates here a, a highlight now I got that highlight I in totally the wrong place I'm looking totally wrong it needs to go there and then straight across front of the car there so and then the blue line comes across here where the blue paint is which means that some of the cerulean and manganese and it actually let's get that in better that'll help let's define this deeper As we come down here, it's better. Um, now let's I want to keep this fairly light, but it does come up across there and across there. Now it's light; it's not that dark. So let's knock it back. That's better. And this blue here, that pulls across slightly. That's it. And then 
again. It comes in here. It takes this highlight over the the bonnet, the hood, or the trunk, whichever you want to think of it, the boot. And it leaves a line all the way across there, which we will just define gently. We have to be careful because the surface of the paper, because I've had to reclaim it, is slightly slightly roughed up but when we dab it out it, that you don't notice it too much and now we've got that in but we've still got the bonnet line visible I might define that bonnet line a little bit better but we'll have to see We'll have to see there. This is an interesting one because this line here is actually here, but it's very soft. And at the moment it's hard, so we've got to soften it off while retaining the fact that it goes a lot lighter behind it. So let's uh, see what we can do. in the way of softening it. Patience, my dears, is a virtue. strange I've not seen it do that before occasionally it seems to freeze and then it comes up with this screen saying that uh, okay. saying that um, the video has been interrupted it will come back again in a moment oh well this should just come back. I remember when I was <laughs> when I was a young lad. You know, it was the days when we only had two television stations. We had ITV and BBC, and that was it. There was no um, there was no Channel Four. There was no BBC Two. There was just the two stations, and television was a lot more unstable a medium in those days than it, it than it is nowadays um, it would be forever breaking down for some reason there would be some kind of technical problem and then on the screen would come this sign saying uh, do not this we are having technical difficulties or whatever it used to say do not adjust your set And I feel like that a bit with this, you know. Hey, if there's, uh, I've set it up here as best as I can so that it works. But I am not responsible, and I cannot be responsible for the state of the broadband net connection in the the uh, in the area. It is what it is, and you know that's it. Now this is blue, this is not white.
as is this this is not white this is blue and it's very fine it's not as it's not as thick as the masking fluid has made it and at this point it disappears into the shadows so it just comes down there like that and here there's a sharpish line It's a matter of looking and seeing what is there, not what might be there, looking just as much, if not more, at the subject before you actually put the paint on. Now there's a line it goes below the highlight the highlight will be there it's going to go blue it's going to it's not stay in that color but there's a line that comes right the way up to about here so we want to start putting that line in This tablet is really struggling. That's, that's it. I'll refine it more in a moment. Don't want to. I'm be very careful not to make it too thick or too prominent really at the moment the paint the paper is too too wet I'm gonna let that dry and try, try again let that dry we actually need more the lighter blue on this bit here that's it I will use the, the white pigment pen at the end just to pull out some of the sharpest areas of white that have dropped back a little bit during the painting process. It happens. It's too prominent. Soften that. Clean piece of kitchen roll. That's better. There's a line there we don't want, but it is actually going to change to a slightly different blue on the far side here. Not that deep. need to keep this line here not the window defined but I shall actually have to work on the the lens flare soon which should sort that out that's a glint there this one's pulling
better, that's finer. Get a little bit of the background colour, the background green, and just sharpen this up here. Which was, a, you know, this is one of those things you can't quite see where the tip of the brush is because it's so dark behind it. But there we are, the ink's coming in. Just sharpen that up. We want a nice, sharp, defined metallic edge. There's a white area that's very white that is not going to look white unless I actually darken everything around it enough. Really ought to charge more for these vaults I than I do. The um, they're quite involved. They quite they take a lot of a lot of time compared to some of the other paintings. But when you do it as a project like this, you take a little bit of the hit yourself, and you have to do it as really in a sense of swings and roundabouts. This one's taken me quite a while, but there will come others that don't take anywhere near this amount of time. So that's the way that's the way of the world. So. Okay, my, now, my tablet is now saying low battery power, 20% remaining, which is not very nice of it. I really don't know what's going on with it. I'll have to swap tablets in a bit, I think. I might have to do another session on this to finish it off. I was hoping to get it all done in one session this morning, but I have now been painting. What's the time? I have now been painting for three and a quarter hours. So that's probably enough for anybody in one session, to be honest.
<laughs> it's nice though I've got it down on the side down here because I can see that the people are watching and uh, say hello indeed hello Jim you seem to be the only person watching at the moment but welcome You're watching me put the go through the final stages of bringing this baby to life. Time to sort the lens flare out. Well, it's fun. You can see on the on the photograph that in this area here, the the sun light is hitting the the front of the the, the roof of the car here, where we've got an overhang and it's creating a strong shadow underneath and a really strong sort of lens flare at the top here. Now the lens flares can be tricky things to to deal with because they are both soft and hard. And so what, I make, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this across here because that does come across there. And I'm painting over where the lens flare will be to some degree. And using some of the yellow ochre that's there, I'm just putting some paint around here that will allow me to work into it and to take it off and in the act of taking it off I'm going to soften the area enough and the same goes here Now this is wrong, 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 because this is not white, not light, it's very sharply defined as just a, a lighter area, but it's not crisp and white, there we go, let's put this in here. Don't want to bring the highlighter pen in until the very, very end of the of the process. So, what we want to what we wanted to do is take paint off, and there is a a, a ray that comes down here that I, I I did start to save it with the masking tape and then I realized, uh, not masking tape, with the masking fluid and then I realized that 
I'm better doing a, a totally different technique. If I get a, a couple of the cards that I use, let me see here, the ray goes from there to about there. And it's very, very fine like that. You see? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, I don't know if it's going to be too thick this card, but we'll see. Take a stiffer brush and push it down there. And when I take it off, we've got a line. have to be careful because it's kind of a little bit over here but this is going to be pulled out I'm going to pull this out with the highlighter pen at the very end now that line at the moment is green and it needs to be different so let's let's go a little bit wider there let's get the deep color and just soften it and then when I've got the when I get the highlighter pen out at the end we'll just put a, a little dab in there it will just define it as a light beam rather than anything tangible. It's gone a little bit wide, but that doesn't matter. We can we can always put paint on. We take that off and put it on. What I wanted it for it to be a bit softer than it was originally. Sort of sharp, but and also it disappears before it hits the car. Right, I'll use the highlighter pen later on and just pull that out. Oops, the daisies. That's not good. Also, use the highlighter pen to bring the sharpness back to this area as well. more I'm gonna get out of this tablet before it dies on me <sighs> why it's not charging I do not know
is coming. I need to lose this sharpness of this edge a little bit. Problem, it will come. Build it and they will come. That's the thing, isn't it? It's a bit what I'm doing here, really. I'm hoping that by just keeping going, I will attract more and more people to, to follow me and watch what I'm doing day by day. don't expect anybody to say for an entire session uh, you know just pop in whenever you feel like it that for a minute or two come back to that with the highlighter ah uh, what is mainly left now are the finishing touches to the wheels and the headlights and then just the glints a little bit of smoothing maybe finding areas that aren't quite right and tweaking them into shape think I think that might be might be it for that session I think we're gonna to have to have one more session on this to finish it off and bring it to fruition next thing to do will be the wheels and the headlights and then the tweaking at the fight at the end bring it all together it's coming I'll come back with some uh, some clean water uh, for the next session I'm not going to take too long a break I want to get this one done today and, uh, and crack on with other things so hopefully that won't be too long what's the time now half past one I do have to go to the post and post one of the paintings that sold from one of the earlier sessions um, but I will be back after lunch sometime I will post on the internet to tell you when thanks for watching thanks for sticking with me it's been a long session this one and uh, I will see you all again 